Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the REST API to start a workflow in Orchestrator. This is an article which can be found on the VCO team website and in this article there is a very detailed description about starting a workflow from the REST API. Uh, so we're not using Firefox, I've bought Paul and Paul is pretty cool but we're going to use this later. Um, so we go, we're going to use Paul to start a web service and the web service is hosted on Orchestrator and Orchestrator eventually will create a folder on the vCenter server. So first of all I'm running Fusion and in Fusion I have two ESXi hosts who are suspended now but I, I also have um, the VCO appliance and the vCenter appliance and those two appliances are going to be used in this video. So let's log on to the appliances. Uh, 192.168. I'm running this on a MacBook Pro. And um, my vCenter server is 130. Log on to the web client. And they are both using single sign on. And the orchestrator server is registered on the vCenter server. So this is the vCenter server and this is my orchestrator server and orchestrator is linked to vCenter but in this video that's not really important. Uh, the important thing in this video is that we are able to see the folders on the vCenter server. Um, so if I'm going to vCenter and I'm going to virtual machines and templates to the blue folders then I see several folders that I created in prior tests. Uh, on the other end we have to go to the orchestrator server and I'm starting the orchestrator server right here with 131 on the end and my password is a VMware logon and I'm able to log on to the uh, to the orchestrator so let's first start with creating a script creating a workflow uh, and let the workflow create a folder on vCenter so if you want to create a workflow then you have to go to the uh, to the workflows and you have to be in the right mode, in the right role. I'm going to design a workflow and I'm going to my own folder and I'm creating a new workflow and it will, I, I'm going to call it start VM. Okay, no, start VM, create folder, whatever. Um, so this is my workflow and this workflow is using boxing to fulfill its task. So when I'm going to the schema and I'm going to edit this workflow, I'm able to uh, add a workflow element. And on the orchestrator server, there are a lot of predefined workflows. And um, if you are going to all workflows right here and you're going you are searching for, for instance, uh, create. Then there are create folders, create everything. Uh, we are going to create a uh, create a folder, create a folder. Let's see, if create a virtual machine folder. No, an affinity rule. I don't need an affinity rule. Um, so there are a lot of uh, ready-to-run scripts right here and one of them is create a folder. Let's search for folder then. Create a virtual machine folder. Create virtual machine folder. Okay, so I'm going to set up the bindings and the parent folder. I'm going to select the parent folder and it will be a fixed value. The parent folder is in this case my virtual machine folder right here. Select and the input will be name. So I'm going to use the input uh, string, the input uh, parameter and it will be name. Promote, save and close. So I have a start VM script right now. When I'm starting the workflow, I'm asked for a name. And in this case, I will name it 
test one, two, three. I'm submitting this one and I'm checking on the vCenter server if my folder is created. So let's go to vCenter and let's refresh this page. Test one, two, three, here it is right here. Cool. So that part is working, but what I want to do now is start this workflow from an external uh, external program, for instance, VCAC or something else. So I want to use the REST API of the orchestrator to start a workflow on the orchestrator and eventually create a virtual machine folder. So that's where we are going to use Paul. And Paul is able to uh, do get methods and post methods and do authentication and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing I have to do is go to a real cool website called pubs.vmware.com and there's a PDF right here describing how to interact with the REST API and this PDF is very cool and contains a lot of information so uh, if you want to do a deep dive into programming with the REST API against uh, the orchestrator then you can use this document but you can also use this article and this article will tell you where to find more information about the API because all the API information is online so what I mean by online is if you're going to this URL and you're opening this URL in a browser and you're putting in the IP address of your uh, the orchestrator server then you will get a complete uh, output of the online documentation so this address is not right this is the complete documentation uh, or this is the API and there is also uh, I think it's called it's called docs or something yes yeah here it is and this is the complete documentation of the whole API but we will do something else because we are going to use Paul to talk against the API of the orchestrator. So first let's get a list of all the virtual machines uh, or all the workflows available um, uh, on the orchestrator server. Workflows. Should work. Let's kick it. So I need authentication to access this resource. Sounds reasonable. So let's take another view on this page and I have to put in a header and the authentication is done by authorization and then do basic uh, basic authorization HTTP basic authorization and you have to put in a username and password and in this case I'm using uh, administration administrator at vsphere.local and um, the password is VMware, it will be encoded in base64, so this is the uh, en encrypted password that eventually will be used by Paul. And it should work now, if I'm going to play this one, I will get an OK, and when I'm going to the text output, or the JSON output, I see a complete list with all the workflows and all their IDs and their names and everything. And I think one of the last workflows is the one I created with start VM. Uh, yeah, here it is, start VM. So this one is pretty important because this URL can be used to get access to that particular workflow. So let's copy this one. So the second step we will take, there's also a possibility to search in workflows. The second step we will take is create a new request and kick off the workflow. So we will start the workflow. The URL will be post instead of get, and I'm pasting the ID of the complete workflow behind it. And on the end, I will add something which is called executions. executions. And I have to put in some URL parameters I have to put in a body because I want to parse the value which is going to be used for the name of the new virtual machine folder so when I'm going back to this article then you will first see how to get access to the API you will see how to get access to the docs uh, we have to also that's right we have to also put in a type I will be using uh, I'm not using JSON but I'm using another 
uh, format, I will use uh, XML. So let's go back to Paul and create a header with uh, content type, content type XML. Ooh. Let's take a look at the document. Uh, decent XML should, should work. Hmm. Normally it's it auto completes, so I'm gonna take a look at another file I'll, I already created and see if I can find the type of URL right here. Authorization header start workflow. Okay, it's application XML. My bad. Application XML right here um, execution so we need a body and the body can be found in the article because the body will contain uh, will contain the, the the string parameter so in this case we have to put in an execution context and the execution context is used to parse the parameters and when I'm going to the poll right here I can paste this Part and put in name and the name of the new folder will be Burke. So name is name and the string will be Burke. And this one can be deleted because I'm only parsing name and this one can also be deleted. So, so let's take a look if it works. Full authentication is required. Okay, so we need to put in uh, an authentication request, an authorization request, just like in this one, authorization, authorization, and we can use uh, the already pre-filled administrator at vSphere.local. Bad request. I'm getting a bad request because the client was the request was synthetically incorrect. Ooh. Synthetically incorrect. That means that there is a, a typo somewhere. So let's go to the PDF documents and let's see if they have some pre-format or I, I can also take my other script right here and see what worked in the past I'm going to body it looks very similar let's copy this one let's put it here paste hmm, okay there it goes except so what it means is that my rest API call is accepted so when I'm going back to the orchestrator client, there is a start VM with a synthetically wrong request, or there, here is the start VM. John Smith already exists. Okay, so I copied and pasted the script that created a folder called John Smith. And because it's already created, I cannot create two folders with the same name. So let's go back to Paul again and put in video right here video and run it again it's accepted again so that's cool let's take a look at the orchestrator start vm right here uh, okay so when i'm going back to my vcenter server to the web client and i'm doing a refresh right here i should see the video folder right here john smith was pre-existent so that's pretty cool. If you want to know more about the REST API and about the orchestrator, then you sh definitely should look at this article because it contains some real good information. If you want to know more about programming or talking against the REST API of orchestrator, then this is the place to go. This PDF document can be found in pubs.vmware.com. And there's also online documentation which can be reached on this URL and it contains all the different API calls that are possible with the REST API of the orchestrator. 
Okay, Eric Sleuth is signing off. And don't forget to visit my website, ntpro.nl. See you guys. Thanks.